So my name is Oskar Kaplun, working for Canon Automation, and I would like to briefly introduce you in what we do uh, as of right now with CanOpen and the new technology CanOpen FT. My presentation will be uh, relatively short. It would take about uh, one hour, maybe less. Uh, we talk about topics of um, can open. If you are, of course, familiar with this one, I'll briefly introduce what, is, what this is, if you don't know. Then we see some examples and the backgrounds for new technology, can open FT. And then I will introduce what is can open FT and what is actually new in there, what is different to can open and how these all things uh, come together. So in the meantime, uh, we, I will, um, I do actually record this uh, presentation. So it will be available after all time uh, to you all. And you will get also the slides as well. <clears throat> so if you have questions, meanwhile, while I'm talking, you can use the chat. Uh, dialogue within the Zoom and answer, ask your question there. So it will be most comfortable for you then. And I will answer this uh, probably by the end of the, uh, this presentation. So thank you very much. And we start through. A few words about myself. I'm working at Ken Automation testing devices, um, maintain uh, pretty many technical groups. We write specification together. They put uh, requirements. I'm putting this into CanOpen format and into CanOpen FT format as well. So a <clears throat> um, few words about Can Automation. If you don't know what uh, the company and organization behind it uh, actually is. It was found in a time when the first field bus um, can was developed by Bosch. The technology was relatively new. Nobody know how to work with this except the Bosch itself, couple of automotive manufacturers. And can was uh, a draw, uh, um, draw, has drawn attention from pretty many um, application fields outside of automotive. Namely was industrial automation embedded, um, every branch actually of embedded uh, system development and so on. So to cover this uh, lack of knowledge, the Kenya Automation was founded to provide all assistance, uh, provide information about products, about technologies and support all developers in this uh, uh, way. Canon Automation um, has grown ever since and there are plenty of uh, companies wanted to uh, work with Can, so we had to organize them into the membership organization. So as you can see, it started with only 16 um, companies, let's say, and some private uh, persons who uh, wanted to join us. Uh, up to now has become 670 members uh, throughout the big branches, big industries around the world. So since we are organization do some uh, services, support our members, there are two things we do actually. On one hand, we support technically. If you uh, have some requirements, would like to design specific devices, can based devices, can open devices, can open FD, even G9039. So you put your requirements and we have organized several technical groups which work actually on developing the specification for the very specific reasons. There is an oversee committee which decides which direction should we go in technical. 
So which new technology should we um, go into and where should we develop the specification or where should we put the requirements itself? As you can see, we have structured this very clearly. We have uh, several new technologies, IG can open, IG can open FT. This is what can open FT and can open uh, technologies are, the specification behind this, they will be maintained within this uh, overseer group. Since we have several new technologies and uh, we have a data, unified data description um, for Canopen. So we moved all this specific um, device kind and application profiles into IG profiles. There are all of those will be technology, as I said, independent. And also we can do the part of can open and can open FD in there. So we had to move the separate them together to get some uh, overview what uh, and where we can do whatsoever. We have also support of the lower layers for, and uh, there are special groups, IG layer one and two, they are actually involved in developing of new technologies uh, uh, together with semiconductor manufacturers and automotive. It is uh, CAN-FD and also the new technology can excel. We will talk a little bit later. And beside this, we have also the branch, the technical group for IG um, uh, G9039. Since SIE provides only CAN-based um, G9039, and they are just playing with new CANFT technology. We said, okay, so for on request of our member, we also do specification for uh, making some kind of bridge between CANFT and J9039 technology and working cooperatively with SAE on that and so on. Another branch is actually IG safety and security. So it is a very big topic nowadays. So we had to, uh, on behalf of our members, we have to organize another group, which have subgroups addressing very specific issues regarding uh, functional safety and uh, layer security. For data link layer, like can, can FD, as well as for high layer protocols as can open and can open FD. So this is regarding technical. On the other hand, we have also um, getting membership fees and um, marketing groups decide actually how do we spend money in favor of our members um, to promote new technologies, open new markets, open new groups, and uh, design specific um, publications to inform people what is going on there, to make their attention, to draw their attention to this one, making some demonstrations for new technologies, we're actually promoting them. So this is what the marketing groups do. So, this is so far about can automation, what we do now, we go to the straight to the topic of today. We said this is a future of can open, can open FD. So since if you are familiar with can open and can open FD, can open is a scan based high layer protocol standardized and can open FD is the same, uh, is the same as the layer, high layer protocol, but it is based on new technology CANFD. This is faster and have a larger payload than CAN. But we come to this uh, yet. So then I would like to say about a few examples, which we already have. We have actually developed those. Um, because um, nowadays there are good big topics, um, cloud uh, data processing in the clouds and offering the cloud services. 
We have actually uh, three applications currently running. They are ready to implement. They are also implemented. Some of them are already implemented, but some of them in a stage of um, starting of the implementation. But we have, they are available. You could pick them as specifications and design your application on this. The first one is predictive maintenance. Currently it is it applies only for lift for now. We said the lift group wanted to provide some um, efficient sensor information, what is going on with this, each single uh, lift component. And it works pretty good. It works pretty good and they wanted actually to um, obtain all the data from each component to um, say when the component should be replaced or when the technician should come up and check out on the condition of this um, component. So we did it. This would be remote diagnostics and actually mostly predictive maintenance. Done it is actually defined which data should be uh, provided uh, from uh, throughout the open network. We do not specify cloud services and not specifying what other services are made through this um, from cloud from end user to the cloud and so on. This is the competence of the other companies. What we did is actually the data in can open network and how we can, which data we actually communicate over the network and how they should be collected there. So another application is already on the market. This is Pedelec and bike sharing. So the bike sharing is not just simple bikes, but this is electrical bikes and not only electrical, they have all can open interface in there. So the components working on a network, like you can see in this slide, you have every single component communicating over the CAN network, communicating, uh, sorry, communicating um, actually the CAN messages, can open messages and provide some process data. What is going on? Do I want to charge my battery? Is the battery low? Should I go to the nearest um, charge, um, uh, charge environment? There will be a charger station. They are already, they're actually located in Rostock in Germany. And this is actually the network structure of every Kenopen Pedelec, which is located as well as in charger as in each single bike. So you can do the remote diagnostic with a special tools. We have a data for this one, define the data in a specification CA454. And a third one would be, uh, is not shown here, but it will be actually, it is actually released. It is uh, one of the generic way uh, how to provide the data. It comprises TCP IP networks. It is a gateway. You can put the, your data inside and you have even the possibility to prepare the data collected from the CAN network in a very specific manner to map this data into HTTP, WebSocket protocols and so on. Make them effectively use, reusable, uh, useful and can be reused, they can be reused, not only with simple um, web application, but could be a part of Internet of Things as well. So in this slide, you can see now I've listed actually all the specification available for it right now for providing this cloud-based uh, functionality, which you can design using this specification. Of course, as I said, we provide only data and protocols 
on a can base level and uh, at least on a gateway based level but we do not define we do not specify any cloud protocols and services this is some other companies too we provide just data how that can be transferred from can open network into the first stage on the way to the internet of things as you can see we have plenty of specification most prominent is uh, 309 series this is network access services for accessing um, can open networks then we have several possibilities how it can tunnel networks how we prepare the data itself and itself and we have also newly developed uh, actually we're working on it security in the can open networks so which would be um, one stage lower than the web services security and so on but we're currently in development stage with this and uh, we wanted to enhance FURVA, the uh, connection and access to can embedded network by using these new technologies, can open FD. And as of right now, I say for can open itself, it's already available. You can have um, HTTP protocol mapping of can open data into HTTP protocols. This you can find in the specification 309-5. We are going on to do also MQTT mapping for, for uh, can open networks, but it will come up very soon. Um, I, hope we'll, I hope even in this year. So with the merging of new technologies like NFT, and of course applying for this application layer can open NFT, completely new uh, way of doing these things uh, I've mentioned before, this application cloud connectivity will be increased to the higher, larger payload of CanOpen, uh, CanOpenFT. But uh, to this will come yet. The security concept as of right now is limited to data link layer and it is already on software and a hardware level available from embedded systems academy the solution in it is currently we have a working group which develops and looks how can we do this also for higher layer protocols can open and can open ft considering of course the limitations of Kenova will be a little bit difficult but can open ft opens new possibilities so, so far about uh, future of CanOpen, what is expected in CanOpen, and what it might have also in you, CanOpen FT technology. Now we go straight to the CanOpen FT. What is this? Said already back there. We have new CanFT protocols developed recently by Bosch. It is um, actually standardized in 2015. 2015. And in 2018 and 17, 18, we have also released the first specification for can open FT uh, protocol. So as you see, it is already available for a while now. You can start implementation, but the question is why should you do this actually? So as you can see, um, this is ISO OC uh, communication um, abstract model applying for actually every communication. This ISO OC applies to every communication model. This is um, actually mean to define each communication system. And for embedded system like KinOpenFD, uh, there is no need to have use all the seven layers of uh, ISO OC model. The only three are sufficient, the lower layer, um, underlined layer, physical and data link layer, where I need to, where I know to, how to make my frame, Telegram send the message in itself, and higher layer protocol like as FT, which interprets the content of this message and can do this uh, unified across various devices and networks. 
So this is basically the idea behind this. So we have the similar concept for Kenopen. And in case of Kenopen, if D, since we have not can uh, as a data link layer and not can as a physical layer, but can FD, which offers some uh, actually nice capabilities, we see we will come to this anyway. So we came to this to design to design Kenopen FD, but now we have to go um, back to it and ask ourselves. How does CanFD and CanFD uh, physical and data link layer would affect actually our application layer? So beside the fact that we could improve CanOpen and we did actually, the itself data link layer and physical layer, well, mostly CanFD data link layer has its own requirements which can be um, actually adopt it very good and increase actually not only improve the Kinopen itself in Kinopen FT, but provide some new capabilities which were never possible in Kinopen. So we start uh, from the uh, bottom to top, worked our ways uh, um, Upstairs, let's say, we start with a physical layer and a data link layer, physical layer topology remains the same. There will be actually linear topology. This is uh, mostly the advantage of this all stuff in can open networks and will be is uh, also in can FT, can open FT networks. Then uh, regarding data link layer as itself, we have bit rates, which we transmit the data. We have defined bit time timings for this in a data link layer. In, and in Kenopen, for example, we have only one uh, from eight possible, but there could be also uh, others above, but they will be Kenopen. And we have some uh, difficulties, although they are not difficult for well itself, but it was not that standardized now with Kenopen FD, we said, okay, we do not offer only one bit rate, but every single Kenopen FD device in the world should have mandatory several pairs of bit rates supporting. So we always know we connect the device to the network and switch what to these bit rate pairs and every device has the possibility to do this. So we have uh, this way uh, interoperability in this level, very good. So regarding the total uh, system design and device design, it is not covered in the base specification for Kenopen FD, the CIA 1301, but it is specified for CanFD networks which can open if the network is also. So CS600 series documents available actually now for purchasing. Um, you can get your information how design can open FT networks and devices in there. So the question is, of course, what is this with can open FT if you don't know what is can FT? And why do we need actually two uh, bit rates in there? What is the reason for this? Well, this is actually not that, uh, not that um, uh, simple to transfer uh, the CAN uh, protocol into new technologies without sacrificing anything. And there are some restrictions in CAN network which you're not allowed to go at higher speed. This is namely um, the bit detection. At every speed up to one megabit, the bit detection goes on in CAN protocol, in CAN networks. What does it mean? I send the bit and I have to read it back and a time I read it back is defined my network um, length and actually my bit rate. 
So this means actually I go high with the speed. I limit my network length with uh, increasing bit rate. At some point, the bit the network length would um, be pretty small, and this is what we don't want to have. So we said, introduce a new KNFT frame format. Introduce two bit rates. To be backwards compatible with CAN, to identify which message, which protocol is actually is going on in there, we said it will be um, basically uh, arbitration phase, and arbitration phase is, is up to one megabit, so it's compliant with um, CAN protocol. Uh, bit rates and communication is bit detection. I only need bit detection there. But when I transmit the data itself, I just wanted to synchronize the, um, my um, receivers to this one. So actually bit detection doesn't require there. So we've introduced uh, this data transmission um, uh, bit rate as well, and it can go high up to the possible driver uh, capabilities. So theoretically, it was up to a um, couple of um, megabits, up to 15, even in laboratory condition, but realistic and practical one would be up to four to five megabit per second. So, so far, the other change is to having um, actually not only two bit rates, and one of them is higher, we have a larger payload up to 64 bytes. So we have to um, control it somehow, and not somehow, we have to do this in a frame itself. So control field as known in CAN message, in CAN protocol, is actually extended to allow to do so. Beside that, there are some bit fields which are controlling um, distinguishment between CAN protocol and CANFD based protocol. There are some important things allowing this on this data link layer to control the message length and control the message uh, type itself. So having this control field allowed in CAN protocol actually to select between um, number of bytes we use. Since 64 bytes couldn't fit in only three bytes, couldn't be coded, it couldn't be um, encoded in four bits, it wouldn't be enough um, weight to do so, said there will become um, coded as the number, fixed number of bytes, which will be supported. And thus we come up without changing the control field that much, this DLC field data length code so much, we could uh, be keep, keep up and support up to 64 bytes of payload as it is. You will have, of course, difficulties to understand, to select now, um, which protocol should we use because a newly developed uh, standard for KNFT incorporates also CAN protocol. And um, beside that, the physical layer is also bound into one and you have to be very careful to select the capabilities of CAN controller, CANFT controller, or even CAN controller, and uh, capabilities of the transceiver itself in case of physical layer, um, because they are all now in um, physical layer is in one specification and data link layer is another specification, but CAN and CANFT are together and all the physical layer, which were uh, earlier um, for CAN, they are separated, but now they in one, so you have to pick your uh, necessary functionality in there. 
Also with network design of KNFT networks, you have to check up how much of this uh, you would need. Do you need just to send um, some um, identifier related uh, message, meaning that there are several identifiers supported in CAN and also in KNFT, the 11-bit and 29-bit identifier. Would you like to send uh, only messages with one identifier and receive uh, also with another identifier? Or would you like to have the full functionality, exchange the data in both directions with full extent of 11-bit identifier or 29-bit identifier or mixed? So for this reason, to make this uh, life is easier and selection is easier, there are certain classes of KNFT network introduced as classes and you can pick up your um, design in there. So there are some more slides where we, um, yeah, actually only one. Um, this is covers our data link layer, the previous one. And now we talk straight to the CanOpen FT and will be this most uh, remaining part of our presentation now. So KNFT has impacts, of course, uh, if you're using um, higher layer protocols due to its higher payload, 64 bytes, less um, of the bit uh, of the speed itself, mostly the payload is interesting. And as you can see, firmware update, a program download of whatever is highly increased. I could put much more and bigger data and I could put in one message many more control information, diagnostic information or process data as I've done before. The question is, of course, I could use a full extent of KNFT payload. And another thing is to maintain the compati backwards compatibility to KNOPEN. So there's two points, two issues actually we have to address and we address them actually we allow to do more or less this one and it's called actually migration path. How do you do these things without sacrificing the most services used in KinOpen, using them in KinOpen FD without dramatically increase the development times and resources and usage of resources. So KinOpen FD protocols actually can open based, but we saw the potential where could we use the higher payload, the bigger payload of KNFT, where does it make sense, where we can adopt this for can open FT protocol itself. So obvious choice is actually process data exchange, which requires to send mostly the data in a very efficient uh, manner. Then it is, of course, the question of confirmed communication it requires two messages, one from sender and confirmation from uh, receiver of this. This is USTO, this new protocol. It is not available in KenOpen. On, on the other hand, it is not uh, STO, as you know from can open is no more available in can open FT. It is actually USTO which is used for this reason there. There are plenty of the USTO protocols allowing efficient data transmission as well, mostly for configuration purposes, diagnostic purposes, and could be used although due to the uh, message overheat, two messages required, could be also used for process data exchange. So another one we used, we adopted to, uh, from KenOpen and adjusted for uh, KNFT message is emergency. So we can do much more than this, but in details in the next slides. The network management protocols as heartbeat, error controls, boot up, time stamping, as you know it probably from KenOpen are actually not necessary to change because 
they remain the same. They have the very low uh, number of pay, uh, very low payload. So that makes no sense. And it would reduce, of course, the development cost for Kinopen FT device. That was the reason. So the topic in this is migration path. In the next slides, we'll look into the protocols, what has changed there and see what we get some examples of it. Process data exchange, this very efficient um, CanFT broadcast um, communication protocol, producer, one producer, many consumers, like it is done in simple CanFT. We have but the possibility now to submit 64 bytes of data. Very efficient, only one message required. Okay, works. Since CanFT doesn't support remote frames anymore due to their certain uh, drawbacks, uh, they are not supported in Kinopen as well. So all the services using RTR will not be used in Kinopen NFT and are not used actually. However, if you need this uh, functionality just to trigger um, PDO transmission, you could be using uh, just a message, one message effect as the PDO itself, sending one PDO working as a trigger condition and then a PDO from the receiver device could be transmitted as well. So you could do this this way, for example. The next protocol we um, USTO, but going back to the STO, just talking about this, how does it work actually? What is the main reason? In classical STO, you have only one default channel. You could define another channels for other communication if you want to cross communication between can open devices. It was not easy, but for just normal communication for configuration from by the master, um, PLC or whatever, which is a Istio client and the device can open devices Istio server works pretty easy. However, required configuration. And the point was not ID of the server always required for both directions. So you always have to configure your client and server to its to this server node ID. So this is configuration overhead. This is nice thing, but we, beside this uh, case, we just wanted to improve this. We saw the potential to introduce a new and impossible uh, things to do with can open, uh, with simple can open with Istio. So we did first at all, uh, we said uh, there is no need to um, identify only to configure the sender and um, a receiver with a server node ID, but it's just a sender node ID. So each one uses its own node ID, effectively reduce this configuration. So another big topic actually there with USTO is that it allows actually uh, not only unicast communication, which was only, which is actually possible uh, with, uh, which is actually the only means uh, used in Kinopen, not only unicast, but now also multicast, so on many participants and broadcast the same way as uh, PDO does as the usual communication. However, you have a confirmation message, but broadcast means I could efficiently transmit also process data and configure multiple devices at once. Another thing is actually we adopted from uh, STO. We have only one simple access uh, for 32 bit values, uh, nothing more required on another hand you need actually uh, much higher uh, payload to transmit like firmware update or download some large chunk of data somewhere. For this one was expedited, segmented and block transfer and can open. Similar to this, we um, designed this, um, of course we improved this 
into uh, USDO as well. But in this case, you could imagine uh, instead of 32 bit value, we have 64 bytes value. So expedited, the minimum transfer, trans, uh, USDO transfer allows us to submit maximum 64 bytes of data. However, some of these bytes will be control bytes. We go to this as well. Another thing is parallel access to very same used to a server. So earlier we needed actually to establish several channels between the devices to allow the communication among them beside the default channel. Now there is no need to this. Every single device could start several access and access the very same device but asking completely different things. We have also this inherent routing capability as well as uh, bounded to this physical net ID and node ID allow us to communicate, can open if the message across several networks or at least provide the identification which network does it uh, um, access and on which device in this network. This means actually the gateways or routers used to uh, provide data between the networks have not, don't, do not need to define this very complex scheme how to route, but the routing information is already provided in the USDO in there. Beside this, there is also possible single and even multiple sub index access. Very nice, nice feature. As you can see, they are great here, multiple access. Um, they are not um, fully developed yet. In a recent version of specification, they will be still not available, but I hope hopefully in the next versions. We also detailed, um, described uh, about codes more detailed as they were in uh, can open to give some opportunities to um, give a very strict, very specific identification of what is going on in the USDO itself. Then due to the um, short on time, I would um, like to briefly give some examples how USDO looks like. Um, the main important thing, you don't need any USDO parameters whatsoever to configure uh, USDO. Since you have no ID of using of the same device, it could be easier uh, configured in the protocol stack. The configuration of parameters actually also not required because we have 64 data bytes, plenty room for everything. So we set we use a couple of bytes, let's say in this case, we're up to nine bytes, up to uh, eight bytes, we use for configuration and we put the configuration into the message itself. So you see it has certain advantages. You recognize on either end of the receiving uh, of the message. On the other end of the message, uh, you know, okay, this message is uh, for specific uh, part, for the specific device. It is addressed to a very specific device. It contains certain data and certain information which supports uh, this message itself. So just go through these uh, control fields, as we call it. Now, due to a case, we have not only point-to-point -point connection as unicast, but multicast and broadcast, we can address them and say where, which device we address and what is going on there <coughs> actually. The next one, I think this, yeah, this is good. The next command specifier, this one is similar to um, KinOpenFT. Uh, similar to KinOpen, where we said uh, the, we distinguish between the kinds of uh, USDO protocols whatsoever. That is actually expedited, segmented bulk transfer. 
and so on, remote transfer, functional dressing whatsoever. We have plenty of room, room for it. And we said we will encode them in a very specific manner. So it is differently as we've done this for Kenope. And a very nice feature, as you can see here, is actually you don't need to have the same uh, response from the receiving part from the server. Um, having this 64 bytes or even eight bytes, but it could be reduced uh, down to the very necessary information we needed there. So the total number of response uh, message is total number of bytes is about six, is exactly six in this case. This means I save my bus traffic in this then, so it advances to that. In the run next slide, so we discuss the several uh, other features. So do this have to do this a little bit quicker to um, get to some point uh, to the end. <laughs> um, use your sessions. As I said, the parallel access which required in Kinopen um, actually several uh, STO channels is not required anymore, and I can identify each single. Uh, access request by session ID, and I get my response with the same session ID. I know, okay, this is to this response and uh, identifies exactly this one. So I can start um, several parallel access to the very same device, and I have not to trouble myself whether I get the right data. The session ID helps me out to do so. So Besides sub-index and index, it was previously possible in it to know which index I write or uh, read from. The information about the total um, length of this message and as a data type and a size of real uh, content helps me out, especially if I using the PLC for collecting the data helping me out to know how much is expected there and how much uh, is really there. So very useful information. Beside this, we have plenty of room, um, about um, 56 bytes of user data of the application data itself. So this was actually an expedited transfer. The segmented transfer has some other capabilities, some other features, some other controls, the control fields uh, serving uh, to better uh, implementing this, better um, monitoring what is going on, like the counter of the bytes we have, count of the data we have there. This is see several messages counter. I can even recognize the last segment. The, is possible to download or upload with segmented transfer a large number of data. However, it is um, communication um, overhead. We have to send confirmation to every single uh, data chunk. If it is too much for you, you could always use the bulk transfer. This is the same for very large number of data, but there is no need for the uh, message overhead, for con uh, uh, communication overhead. You just transmit all the data from for one big block containing several, plenty of segments or whatever it might be. And finally, you get the confirmation from the server I've got this data and verify checksum, everything's working, oh, perfect, okay. This is alternative means to do so. This is only in case if 64, if um, your data is larger than 60, than uh, 56 bytes, you can use these transfers. So, so much about USTO uh, features we have. There is also to mention the emergency protocol. 
This is very nice one. We said we would not like to change it completely. As you can actually see, this is the same message as you say emergency, but very same message as you had in Kenop and is actually incorporated in the bytes 4 to 11. So we put this in there, but we saw the possibility to, beside the length of message, which uh, has their own advantages, we saw opportunity to improve actual emergency message. We saw there no, was no opportunity to do so to identify uh, if I have several uh, logical entity in the, my device, I couldn't know from which one the emergency um, is generated. And now we know this, we put the byte, the very first byte, logical device number, so we know exactly where it goes, where it comes from. Another thing is very simple. We know the emergency version, which kind of features in there due to SIA specification number. This means actually which um, emergency error codes are used. They could be different in the next version. So I know exactly which specification I have taken for it. And of course, we do uh, want to know, or say our members who designed together with us, the C301, uh, 1301 specification said, we don't, don't know to, uh, do want to know actually the state of emergency. Is this recoverable or not recoverable error? Something like this. Is it a warning maybe? So the status delivers exactly this information. And very important thing also, a time when the emergency was generated. So it was also a very nice feature, only possible with having payload of Kenopen. For right now, there is a version um, 1.0 of Kenopen FT specification. Very soon, another will be released, version 2.0 having a uh, time designed as the a universal time, UTC time. So, and some other minor issues in there. So will be released very soon, just to, for your information. Yeah. Very few things uh, I would say about additional protocols, which uh, we used in uh, let's say for configuration of the node ID and bit uh, timing of the device, of KenOpenFD device. There is LSSFD um, actually developed right now. And there is nice, very nice features. How can we identify the device much more quickly than it was uh, possible before? This is so-called nibble-based device checking up and you are welcome to check out the new work draft of LSS FT for this one. So there are still some things to do or basically, um, ah, okay, this is a little bit older slide because it's not things to do. They are actually work in progress. Uh, we have some additional uh, uh, additional protocols, advanced protocols, further protocols for KenOpenFT, which are currently working on. Um, layer setting services I mentioned, then also master services. Then beside this, you want to know how to design physical layer. There will be a, uh, is a specification currently development. And finally, you would like to uh, provide, uh, to design your device. I would like to know how to describe the device information. And you would like to test the device. For this reason, we're developing currently KenOpenFT electronic device description conformance testing. So, few words about this. KenOpenFT device description is actually XML. There will no text based like the ADS one. This is XML based. We are close to finalize it uh, probably next few months. Uh, we release the first version of it. You are welcome to check this up. 
can open FT testing. Since we're currently developing a test plan, the test tool is still on hold, so to say. But we have testing procedure. Even if you're starting developing KinopenFT devices now, we have a testing procedure. We can test it at Canon Automation. And you could also use this testing procedure to pretest your device. Once we finished with the test plan, the test tool, similar to the Canon Automation uh, conformance test tool, will be also uh, designed as well. So to summarize all these things, we have new technologies, we have updates on CanOpen with this um, data available for IoT. Um, we have uh, CanFT, CanExcel new technologies. CanFT technology is then having higher application layer, a higher layer protocol, CanOpenFT is released. The version 2.0 will be released also very soon. Have some advantages, have some recommendations for device and network design for new can open FT networks and devices. This is available specification C600. We have migration path allowing actually to uh, bridging between can open and can open FT networks to a certain degree of capability. You're welcome then to check out our other um, events. Actually, I would um, point you out to our uh, event on 26th of May, early in the morning, same time I started there. It will be taking four hours or something like this. We're introducing these new technologies beside can open it with a very small part of it, but can FT, can Excel, this migration path, all this information you will find there and you're welcome to join us there. So beside there, there are can open device and application profile, which we adjust for can open FT, but don't worry, can open remains as it is. It just work in parallel with can open FT. Testing is available. And this is a topic for next time. The can open FT is being checked. Um, current is being checked for support of the new technologies. So, we suppose that we will stick with KinOpenFT for a while, will be on, not only for um, KinFT based data link layer, but um, Furva data link layers will be, which will be developed there. But we will not, we will know this for sure in recent times. So back to our webinars, new webinars, um, could check this out. Our email services, you can get the recent information, what is currently going on at Canyon Automation, what is currently going on with uh, certain products in uh, certain markets, can open, can open FT, can FT, can Excel, whatsoever. And I point you out also that you could contact us anytime on uh, our email address, call us and <clears throat> remind you about this event next uh, week on 26th of May, early in the morning. So I'm finished for now, and now it will be a good time for asking a question. As I see now, I have some uh, chat information, yes. Uh, so the first question uh, was, is can open FT <clears throat> supporting 11-bit arbitration or 29-bit arbitration. So you mean, of course, the um, uh, identifier, can identifier and can open, uh, can FT identifier. Well, um, the efficiency of 11-bit identifier is difficult to uh, compete with. So we stick with 11-bit identifier also with, um, for can open FT. But the same as can open, it is possible, although this is not standardized things to do, you can use 29-bit identifier. 
basically in a cob id as far as you know what it is it, every uh, protocol in canopen has this uh, identification which is partially designed in the protocol stack the upper bits uh, whatsoever they actually totally uh, 32 bits long so the 29 bits are incorporated into the cob id identifier but they are not used actually in um, can open FD or in can open. But if you have a usage of this, you can do this. So hopefully it is one question. And the second question is there already can open FD stack implementation? Yes. Um, actually, I would address, point you out to microcontrol or in this case, microcontrol designs actually um, whole applications, but you may ask them for protocol stacks, ready protocol stacks. They have it. And another company is um, Emotas. They offer actually purely can open FT, beside can open, also can open FT uh, protocol stack implementation available for um, porting for various microcontrollers. You have to be aware of that um, your microcontroller, besides supporting KNFT, um, besides supporting KNFT, should have uh, enough resources because KNFT is uh, a little bit, uh, um, have bigger requirements to resources and so on. However, the very nice thing, it is not standardized as a part of migration path and is actually possible um, if you actually have can open FT, uh, having can open on microcontroller supporting can FT. So I just want to operate the same protocol stack or maybe even um, operate two protocol stacks on can FT controller. It's of course, it's not possible to do this uh, at the same time, but you have to see the possibility to switch between them. But it is possible and will be actually possible to do so having um, can open FT on CanFT. You have to use, of course, the CanFT message, uh, CanFT message on the same size of uh, can open, the same size as can. On the other hand, can open FT is not possible to do on can controllers because of the certain requirements and uh, certain protocol differences. This is even not possible to mix um, can open and can, can open uh, and can open FD device in the same network because of USTO protocols, because of some other incompatibilities like emergency and the objects which are not similar. The only way to do so is to having a bridge between the network segments where separate can open and can open FD. And this is the only way to do so, uh, provide is uh, exchange the data between these two uh, segments. Any other questions on this? If no other questions, um, then we have pretty nice uh, taken uh, about an hour of the time. Dan, I thank you very much for participating in this. And again, you get this um, slides uh, you see to today, you saw today, as well as the recording uh, for this. And you could um, hear this comfortably at home and again, I will point you out to this um, Tech Days event online we have next week, where we do some advanced information, although each single piece of uh, presentation would take about half of an hour, but it might be quite interesting if you're interested in the topics and new technologies currently in development in Canon automation. 
Okay, if no other question arise, again, thank you very much for participation. And uh, I would like to finish it and finish today's presentation and hope you will have uh, received, got the good start for your um, requirements, for your needs, what you wanted to know about this. You're welcome to join us and to ask us any questions. Wish you a pleasant day. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye. Thank you all for the presentation. Welcome.